What's happening, everybody? All right, so this is gonna be part two of this four hole spacer versus open spacer adventure I've found myself on. And well, things didn't quite go as well as I had hoped based on the springs that I had installed. Given the data that I had received from my, and I wanted to show you guys this, yes, the old school LM2. <laughs> oh man, I love this old thing. Anyway. Getting all the data on this uh, combination wasn't really the result that I was looking for. The truck still wanted to go lean at partial throttle. So one of the issues is, out of this 1464 kit, to give you guys an idea, it comes with different sets of springs. The middle ones here are the ones that come from the carburetor from the factory. And the basic gist of it is that those springs represent different levels of enrichment on the primary jets. And with the secondary jets being fixed on this AVS2, the main adjustment comes with the primaries, which is fine and it's a great street carburetor. But one of the things that I noticed is that unless I'm running the most aggressive springs in this carburetor, even with the four hole spacer, giving that carburetor significantly greater signal, it would still go flat under power enrichment mode at partial throttle. And I found that to be kind of interesting because initially it was rich, that stronger signal on the carburetor, obviously hitting the engine with more fuel. I thought that I could maybe lighten up the spring just a little bit. And when I say lighten up, I'm only lightening it up by one inch of mercury going from eight inches to seven inches of mercury. But you know what? This combination did not like that at all. As a matter of fact, there was a very noticeable flat spot in the acceleration when you started to tip into the throttle. And on the wide band, it would go from reading just after tip in, just as you start to just crest into that power enrichment mode, it would go from 13.0 to 15.8 to 16.0 basically that quickly. Now, that's not a good thing, and you could feel it. You could feel the truck just get lazy, and it was a real flat spot in the acceleration curve of the throttle itself. And once you got past that, really dipped into the throttle, then the needles would come out of the jets, they'd hit the thing with more fuel, the truck would start accelerating normally and everything was basically fine at that point. But oddly enough, nothing was really any different after that point. Air fuel ratios were all basically the same. So this combination, I am still now again running the more aggressive springs in this carburetor and it's working out just fine. Now, I wanna kind of give you guys this too. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this was that I had seen the videos. I've seen the Engine Master's video, I've seen Richard Holder's videos, and there's a couple of things that I noticed that those videos didn't answer for me, a couple of questions that they didn't answer for me. And one of those was, well, those are all Holley derivative carburetors that are on a dyno, uh, as opposed to being on a car, literally driving around on the street, which brings up the second point. None of those videos address partial throttle, tip-in throttle, air fuel ratios and how those carburetors reacted under those conditions. See, on a dyno, it's kind of an all or nothing thing. It's either wide open or it's not. You could put throttle stops on the thing and you know, step the throttle X number of percentages, but you typically won't see those types of tests being run. In this case, I wanted to see what the air fuel ratio difference would be if we're talking about real world driving situations. And so that's really what I was testing here. Come to find out whether it had the four hole spacer or the open spacer, this particular combination being a 400 small block with an AVS2 650 carburetor, it needed all the spring that it could get. And again, it was going through the period where you'd roll into the throttle, it would start to accelerate just fine and then it would nose over. It felt like it was kind of just, just flat. And then again, you roll into the throttle a little bit more and it would pick up. And without having that wide band, you'd have never known that the thing was going really lean. And 
It was surprising to me again because the difference shouldn't have been that much, but in practical application, well, the real world trumps theory in this case. So at any rate, wanted to bring this to you guys, let you know basically what the results ended up being. The truck seems to drive better with the four hole spacer. It's got more tip in throttle response. It's got more power. Basically, it feels like it's smoother. I don't really, I can't really say that it feels a lot stronger, but it does feel a whole lot smoother. And the air fuel is at a bit more of an acceptable range all the way across the board. Even though it is a little bit rich, I'm okay with that because I understand the whole issue with distribution with a carbureted setup. So I'm gonna leave it the way that it is. I had a lot of fun doing this. This truck is a riot to drive. I, she is in full-on tire fryer mode right now. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope that helps you out. We'll catch you on the next one.